The city of Liyue Harbor is large and beautiful. The citizens are devout followers of Rex Lapis, the Archon of Geo. Filled to the brim with master artisans of various crafts and home to the Crux fleet, led by the great Captain Beidou, the city prospers. Upon the backs of the aforementioned, Liyue has prospered for many centuries. People travel from all over Tevan for a chance to trade in Liyue or to purchase the goods that are sold there. However, the path for Liyue was not always clear, for it is said that only by the wisdom and guidance of Rex Lapis was Liyue delivered from the Archon Wars of ancient times and the plagues that followed. We'll begin where it all started, with the Archon of Geo. Rex Lapis, descended from Celestia, lowering the tides, raising Mount Tianhang, and calming the ocean waves. This newly founded landscape allowed the settlers to found villages in the area that would become Liyue. Looking to the mountain for resources, they tunneled into its depths, finding rich deposits of luminescent jade. They came to call the mountain Shunhui Fort. Shunhui is a Chinese word synonymous with the English word scintillation, meaning flash of light. Although over time the name was casually simplified to just mountain rock, thusly losing its original meaning. For a time, the splendor of the luminescent jade brought all who lived in Tianhang great prosperity. It is even said that the riches extended far beyond the bounds of the region itself. The wealth and riches of the people were bound to attract unwanted attention from those with malintent, and thus protection became necessary. From the Chinese word meaning precious, Guizhong a king and friend to the Geo Archon, led his people to build large crossbow ballista around Mount Tianhang. Invested in his people's well-being, he led them to the northern side of the mountain, teaching them to tend the soil. This paved the way for agriculture to become the main export of his people, who would later become known as the Adepti. Fields of crops as far as the eye could see would grow, and Rex Lapis bestowed on this area the title Guili Plains. Guili being the Chinese word meaning exceptionally beautiful. Sadly, the peace and prosperity of this era would not last. Many of the archons of this time, fueled by greed and malice, strove for dominion over the lands. The Adepti, joined by Rex Lapis's chosen heroes, the Yi Che, meaning nature spirits, would fight to protect the Guili Plains in vain. Unable to stop the armies of demons, the Guili Plains would eventually fall, leaving them in ruins and its king, Gui Zhong, dead. The Archon of Geo guided the Adepti south of the mountain, leaving the Guili Plains to be reclaimed by the wilderness. With the help of the Adepti and the Yi Che, Rex Lapis would succeed in quelling the malice. Supposedly, he summoned forth large rocks, crushing his foe's armies into the earth, thus bringing order to the Archons of Celestia. This, however, took centuries to accomplish, and in this time, all that was once green and good was destroyed. Plagues would break out across the land, following the Age of War, as a result of the death and decay of demons below the surface poisoning the soil. During this period, the Adepti are said to have retreated into hiding to the Zheyun, unheard from to this day. The Archon War was over, but unrest continued. Demons spawned by the malice of defeated Archons would result in continued demon attacks. Rex Lapis turned to his faithful guardians again, the Yi Shi. The five guardians would continue to purge evil for many years. However, Despite being unmatched in battle, they were not immune to the effects of continued conflict. One by one, they would be consumed by rage or madness. Some would even turn against the people they were charged to protect, while others simply disappeared. In the end, only one remained after a millennia of service to the people, the golden-winged king, Alatus. Known as a great slayer of demons, 
Alatus was eventually too destined to become lost. Try as he might to assimilate into a life of normality in the post-war ages, the losses he endured proved too much for him. His perceived failures to protect his fellow guardians and those that he cared for were cumulative. Viewing himself as unredeemable, his pain grew more acute over the passing years. His heart turned bitter slowly as he succumbed to anguish. Alatus would eventually disappear as well. None now know where he may have gone, but some say during the offering of lanterns, you can hear the faint sound of a flute from the vast marshes. The great Yiche warrior calling his lost friends back to their homeland. Those remaining in Liyue, in the new age of peace brought on by the efforts of their saviors, turned to craftsmanship and trade to forge a new livelihood for themselves. Commerce would become the driving force of prosperity for Liyue. Organizations and guilds based on trade would form, the foremost of which came to be named Qizing, went on to govern all of the known trades, helping to ensure prosperity as well as warding off monsters at their borders, the Qizing were essential in founding the city of Liyue Harbor. Additionally, its secure location would further aid in the generation of wealth for all who lived there. And so there we have it, Liyue as it exists today. As we've seen, Liyue did not always enjoy the peace and stability as it currently exists. The past of this region is one filled with war and turmoil, but still, despite this the people managed to develop a thriving region with a bustling city. What do you think of the origins of Liyue? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching Teyvat Historia, and may the seven guide you.